When people think of scoliosis, the number one they think, the more they think about it, of course, is scoliosis in children. And scoliosis, uh, the onset of scoliosis is definitely more, most common in children. But unfortunately, it's not the most common age group of scoliosis. The most common age group of scoliosis is actually late stage adults. However, scoliosis in children has three main categories, and that's something called infantile scoliosis, um, juvenile scoliosis, and adolescent scoliosis. Infantile scoliosis is patients that are diagnosed with scoliosis between zero and two years of age. Between two years of age and roughly around 10 to 12, when the child, before the child goes through puberty, that's when a patient is diagnosed with juvenile scoliosis. And then once you're greater than 10 to 12, but still a child and not fully adult, say like 18 or less, they're called adolescent scoliosis. So we have infantile, juvenile, and adolescent scoliosis. All three of these cases will eventually become adult scoliosis, and these are patients that are, of course, skeletally mature. And then elderly scoliosis is patients that are over 55 to 60 that are diagnosed with scoliosis. So obviously all of those other cases eventually become elderly scoliosis, and that's why Elderly scoliosis patients are the greatest percentage of or the greatest population with the highest percentage of scoliosis in their spine. When we look at treating scoliosis patients, we always say where we can make the biggest impact, we believe, is in treating kids when they're young because we can have the greatest impact on what the curve can end up being. And the reason why we say this is because the majority of a patient's scoliosis in the majority in most cases, in an idiopathic adolescent case, it's gonna occur when they go through growth. Meaning when, uh, when we have a juvenile case that starts to move to adolescent stage and they start to go through puberty, start to grow rapidly, that's when their curve is at the greatest risk of progression. If they start to progress, this is when they're gonna get the most of the degrees to occur in the shortest period of time. So intervening now can have a tremendous impact on what their curve ends up being when they stop growing. So that's really what our goal is. When we intervene with an adolescent case or a juvenile case, the goal is to make them move into the adult stage with the smallest possible curve, because we know once they're an adult, the curve is gonna progress much slower. So that's why we always wanna treat kids the younger, the better, the smaller, the better, okay? However, unfortunately, scoliosis in the traditional model is not necessarily treated that way. In fact, it's treated exactly the opposite. If they find small curves, meaning that are curves that are between 10 and 25 degrees, this is what they call it, a mild scoliosis, they pretty much do nothing. It's called watch and wait. And again, it makes no sense because if we know curves are gonna progress when patients grow, and that's when the risk of progression is gonna occur, and we see a 10-year-old, let's say, with a 15-degree curve, and we say, oh, let's just watch it and see what happens. There's two things that are wrong with that model. Number one is, we don't know when the child's gonna grow, and then two, if it grows, we don't know how big it's gonna become. So let's say this 15-degree curve, you know, in a 10-year-old uh, child, they say, okay, come back six months or come back in a year, and let's see what it's doing. A lot can happen in a year. There could be a lot of growth and a lot of progression. You're not gonna find out for that length of time. Minimally, if you're gonna watch and wait, minimally, at least observe the height of the child and make sure that if they're growing, you go in for an evaluation sooner if you see a significant growth. But my recommendation, of course, is to reduce the curve. Once the curve becomes greater than 25 degrees, this is when they call it moderate scoliosis. And in a 25 degree, but less than 40 degrees, this is where they call it moderate and they would use something called a Boston brace. Now a Boston brace is a squeezing style brace and the only goal of the brace is to try to stop it from worsening. It's not to reduce it, not to make it smaller, it's just to stop it. Once curves unfortunately progress beyond 40 degrees, now it's called severe scoliosis, and now is when they only would do something to try to reduce the curve at this stage. And that's when that's an invasive spinal surgery that requires fusion, rods, screws, and bone grafts, which is, of course, uh, lifelong surgery. So if that's the treatment that actually eventually gets to reduce a curve, why wouldn't you want to treat it much sooner to try to avoid that type of invasive treatment? And that's what we think about at the Scoliosis Reduction Center is that we're not going to just want to watch a curve progress over time in children. We want to treat curves sooner and have the greatest impact on their life and longevity and what they go into the adult stage with. We don't want them just going into adult stage 
with just a curve that's less than surgical levels, we want them going into adult stage with the very smallest possible curve. Why do we want that? Because we know adult curves that are smaller progress less than the curve, adult curves that are bigger. So there is a benefit going into the adult curves, adult life with a 15 degree curve as opposed to a 35 degree curve. So if that's the case, why wouldn't you treat it when it's smaller so it would never become 35 or 40 or 50? Our treatment program falls among th several main modalities, but number one is that we use chiropractic scoliosis care. We use specific type of chiropractic care to help reduce scoliosis patients' curvatures. This includes not only chiropractic adjustments, but it includes something called scoliosis-specific therapy and scoliosis-specific rehabilitation. This is done to help reduce the curvature in the office. Um, in addition, we prescribe home scoliosis exercises and isometrics and global rehabilitation to help strengthen the spine. And a lot of times we may use something called a scoli brace, which is not a squeezing brace that's gonna to try to stop the curve, but a corrective brace that's gonna to try to reduce the curve. The combination of these treatments are what's gonna get us the very best results. And you know, I can think of very, uh, of lots of patients that I've taken care of that were on their road to become a surgical level or actually were surgical level curvatures that we actually reduced. I tend to see two types of patients that walk in my office. Children that are diagnosed with scoliosis and they say they get diagnosed with a curve that's below surgical threshold. And normally they're told not to do anything. And then the parents say that makes no sense because they know either a friend or a family member or maybe themselves that their curve progressed during growth and they want to be proactive. And these curves, we're normally reducing in a curve size that's well below surgical because I already found them below surgical. And so when I see patients that have 25, 30 degree curves and, and they're coming to my office and they're already below surgical threshold, we normally can keep them well out of surgical threshold by the time they're done growing and they wean them from their treatment and they're totally fine. The second type is the curve, is the patient that actually followed the recommendation of the orthopedist, meaning they did nothing until they hit 25 degrees, they wore a Boston brace, it wasn't effective at stopping the curve because they're just squeezing, the curve progresses beyond 40, and now they're told they need scoliosis surgery. And now these patients are now looking around trying to find something because they were trying to avoid surgery. The curve progresses to about 50 or 60, and that's when I get their phone calls when they're around 50 or 60 degrees, and my goal is to get them below surgical threshold. Now, this is a very different goal because it's we want to reduce the curve to get them below surgical threshold versus the first case I told you about. Even though we're effective in reducing these curves, I would have much rather seen them sooner. Our average reduction is 30%. So when we see patients that are 60 degrees or less, we're very comfortable in saying, we have a very good opportunity reducing your curve below surgical threshold and avoiding surgery. And you can see lots of those on our results page as well. So. If you're either surgical or you think the curve, you think the curve is going to progress because of the age of your of your of your daughter or your son, or even maybe it's yourself and you're watching this video and you're concerned about the curve progressing, well, let's reduce it before it becomes larger. That's the number one thing I would definitely recommend if you've been diagnosed with scoliosis or if you have a child that's been diagnosed with scoliosis. There is no benefit in just watching your curve worsen or your son's or your child's curves worsen as they grow. There is nothing that shows that's going to provide any benefit for them. However, there's great benefit in taking a 25 degree curve and reducing it to 10 or 15, but there's great harm in letting a 25 degree curve become 45 or 50. So my recommendation is always to reduce the curve the minute you find it, you have a much greater chance of having a better outcome. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this information helpful. If you'd like to hear about other topics and information on scoliosis, type in the comments below and let us know. And finally, subscribe and hit the bell icon to be notified of when we publish content. Thanks.